Hello, AP World History students, and welcome to Chapter 36, Part 2. Part 1 was all about World War II. Uh, the war has uh, basically ended in Europe in May of 1945. It's a fantastic ending. The Soviets and the uh, Allied troops from Western Europe and the U.S. Uh, meet at what's a, a place called the Elba River, and it was like a huge celebration. And then there were a couple of conferences to try to figure out post-World um, War II Europe especially, and uh, then we reach a time that we call the Cold War, which lasted for about five decades, and we're going to see it had numerous implications for the world and for the world today. It was basically a balancing act between Russia, which is represented by the bear, and the United States, represented by Uncle Sam and their allies. And as you can see, they're teetering on top of the world. And that's really, uh, I think, a good illustration of what the Cold War was like and even having grown up during the cold war there were times where it was uh you know we wondered if the war would go hot and there were a few hot spots and we'll talk about those uh coming up so first of all uh in 1945, February of 1945, it became clear that Germany was going to lose the war. Of course, it would have been great if the war had ended by then because thousands, if not millions of people died between February 1945 and May 8th when Germany finally surrendered. Um, but they knew the end was in sight. The Allies knew the end was in sight. So they uh, met in Yalta and they planned for a liberated Europe. Europe at the war's conclusion, and they talked about what they would that would look like. One of the things that they talked about actually was whether Germany should have to pay war reparations, and we know how disastrous that was after World War One. And so that was something that uh, the United States, in particular, did not want to, to put Germany in that position again. Um, the Potsdam Conference would follow the uh, surrender in Europe, and this was in July 1945. Uh, the Soviet Union, uh, Great Britain, the U.S. were there. Um, a couple of things that they talked about at the Potsdam Conference was the demilitarization of Germany, the ending of racial laws in Germany, and then a discussion of what the borders should be in the post-war era. Uh, so this was actually a pretty important decision. It would have ramifications for a lot of people. The What ended up happening was the Axis land was divided. The Allies occupied Germany, uh, the western part of Germany, with an awkward division of Berlin into four zones. So if you look here, this is West Germany, and uh, then the Allies, the Soviets, uh, actually occupied the eastern part of Germany. And then the uh, area of Berlin was divided between four zones, a French zone, a British zone, a United States zone, and a Soviet zone. And we'll talk more about that in just a little bit. The U.S. occupies Japan at the conclusion of the war and helps them to rebuild and the southern half of Korea, which we know as South Korea. The Soviets occupied the northern half of Korea. Uh, North Korea is now still a communist um, country, kind of a rogue country. They're really on their own. Um, so the origins of the Cold War, basically it comes down to an ideological struggle between the capitalist and democratic Western nations and the communist East. So they came together under a common enemy for World War II. After the war was over, the differences between the capitalist ideologies and the communist ideologies would become quite acute. Um, so the West, would include USA, Great Britain, and the Western European countries, and the East would include the USSR and all of the nations in Eastern Europe that would fall under uh, Soviet uh, control, basically, and they would be called the, the Eastern Bloc nations or the Soviet Bloc. Um, so in the wake of post-World War II tensions, 
um, we know the League of Nations was very ineffective and primarily because it had no enforcement power. So the United Nations was created in 1945. And I know many people are involved in groups like Model UN and you study the United Nations in greater detail. Uh, you'll know if you are involved in that, that there is something called the Security Council. And the Security Council does have five permanent members, USA, Soviet Union, Great Britain, France, and China, and then other members that rotate in and out of the Security Council. And the Security Council is able to make decisions regarding um, if intervention is needed in a particular region that is having difficulty. So some early Cold War policies. Um, first of all, uh, the Truman Doctrine, Truman Doctrine, you have to remember this. And remember, it was Truman who made the decision to drop the atomic bomb. Um, he was a president during a really important time in the history of our country. Um, in 1947, the Truman Doctrine was one that was committed to the containment of communism. In other words, the Truman Doctrine stipulated that the U.S. could support intervention on behalf of democracy if democracy was threatened anywhere in the world. This would lead to a couple of hot spots during the Cold War, including um, in Korea and Vietnam and in Cuba. Um, Korea and Vietnam, of course, being uh, much larger than the uh, involvement in Cuba. But this is going to be a really important doctrine that will inform a lot of policy decision making in the 50 years of the Cold War. Additionally, the Marshall Plan was a plan to help reconstruct Western Europe. As you can imagine, the toll of the bombings was enormous. Uh, certain areas were completely obliterated. Other areas didn't suffer as much damage. Uh, Berlin was basically completely destroyed. And so the U.S. offers $13 billion to reconstruct, help reconstruct Western Europe through cooperation and capitalism with the nations of Western Europe. And it was quite a successful plan. It did lead to uh, military uh, personnel being in Europe pretty much throughout the Cold War. And to this day, uh, the U.S. has bases in Western Europe. Comic-Con is the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance. This was the USSR's uh, approach to providing aid for rebuilding in Eastern Europe. Um, and then uh, we have a couple of organizations that are formed uh, for defense purposes. So NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, uh, provided collective defense against communism in Western Europe and in the USA. The counterpart to NATO for the Soviets was the Warsaw Pact. So the USSR and the US communist nations were part of the Warsaw Pact. And between NATO and the Warsaw Pact, we have two uh, convening powers in the Cold War with the potential for making uh, decisions about engagement or not engaging in any kind of um, military action. Most important on here is the Truman Doctrine. That is very important to remember because it will guide uh, our nation, national activity in the years of the Cold War. So Germany, what do we do with Germany? Germany suffered horrible losses during and during the war and after the war it was very unstable so the western allies in berlin in particular had uh, divided the western part of berlin as i mentioned earlier into french british and american zones and east berlin was controlled by the soviets the western allies decided to merge the zones of west germany of west berlin rather and so we have west berlin and East Berlin. Now keep in mind, Berlin is sitting in the middle of East Germany. So there was a road that went from West Germany into West Berlin, going through part of East Germany and people could not get off the road on their way to West Berlin. So in 1948, the Soviets begin a blockade 
of links between West Berlin and West Germany. There had been freedom to travel and bring supplies to West Berlin from West Germany, uh, but the Soviets blockade this and the US did not take this very well. So Ber the Berlin airlift supports West Berlin in 1948 and it ends in 1949. And there's a story of the candy uncle who would drop uh, chocolate candy on little parachutes into West Berlin for the children that were there. And I'm sure the adults too. And there's a story and I wish I could play it on here, but I'll link it on to our Schoology page about a little girl who was so excited tasting chocolate for the first time. So supplies were airlifted into West Berlin. Uh, this did create tension between the US and, and her allies and the Soviets, but eventually the blockade was lifted and the Cold War doesn't go hot, and, and that's a good thing. And by the way, at this time, both the Soviets and the US had nuclear weapons as well as other nations were developing. So we now have two new official nations. We have the Federal Republic of Germany, or FRG, in the West, and the German Democratic Republic, GDR, in the East. And so I remember watching uh, the Olympics when I was a child and seeing the FRG and the GDR Olympians uh, uh, competing as a separate nation. And I can't imagine what that must have been like because there were certainly families, and I know for sure that there were families divided. Um, some were, were left in East Germany and some were in West Germany, and they were divided by this, this, this line. And eventually, Berlin itself was divided by a wall in 1961. And what they wanted to do, what they hoped to achieve with the wall was to stop East Germanys from fleeing to the West, East Germans from fleeing to the West. What ended up happening was that um, people would dig tunnels or find different ways to get through uh, the wall and to try to get to the West. So that is what I uh, wanted to talk about today in this screencast. I'm going to also add a couple of links to the Candy Uncle and to uh, hopefully escaping from East to West Berlin. Thank you for your attention and have a great day.